Morning. Um, Keegan Murray, I know you talked about this the past few days, but uh, if you don't mind me asking again, have you uh, spoke to exactly. him about? <laughs> have you spoke to him? You know uh, about you know get him into a point where he's more confident in shooting those um, long range shots. My message has been the same to Keegan. Hey, just let it fly. If you're open, let it fly. I mean, the, the what he's going through now is invaluable. I couldn't couldn't script it better for. A uh, young man like himself, who's going to be really, really good in this league, to uh, be able to hit some adversity in a situation like this, uh, obviously on this level, um, it's you know, it's it's you know, obviously you hope he's making shots, but for him to try to uh, go through this and figure it out in year one is is good. But gotta let it fly. I've been telling him that the whole time. We're, we'll live with whatever happens. Mike, back here. You, you've talked about uh, guys like Delhi speaking at team dinners and the experienced guys sharing with the rest of the team what it's like to go through the playoffs. I'm curious, how have you seen those guys and other experienced guys help um, during maybe during huddles or during timeouts over the course of this series? Uh, they're they're constantly uh, uh, chattering. You know, they're talking to guys. delhi has been great. You know, um, I don't know if he wants to do this, but he would be a freaking fantastic coach whenever he gets done playing, you know. And I know he still has a lot of, a lot of basketball left. He's got a huge love for the game, but his uh, his demeanor and intelligence and all that other stuff is, is, is off the charts. Way, 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 way. Everything's way better than me. He's better than me. He's that good. He's good. Hey, Coach. Um, over here. With Draymond back and after the game that Looney had um, last game, what do you need from Domas and guys like Alex Len um, to match that physicality? Uh, not just those guys. I mean, Draymond, uh, Draymond is too, but Loon's a heck of a uh, rebounder, offensive rebounder. And so, you know, those guys got to continue to work to try to put bodies on them, but we have to sometimes send a second body to, to Loon, you know, to gang rebound because he's, he's that good. He's smart. He's long, he's uh, real big, and he uses his ankles really, really well. So it's got to be a collective effort. Coach, good morning. How are you? What's up? Hey, I'm just wondering, how much how much you've learned just beyond the Warriors staff that you've taken with you here and maybe even used here or just in the way to approach situations like this or, or positions like this? I mean, you learn a lot. You know, I've learned a lot from those players, from Steve, the rest of the coaches. Um, but, you, you know, you, as you get older, you kind of reflect back and you look at different situations with other coaches from me being with, um, um, you know, Bernie Picker's staff, Tim Gergovich in the summertime, you know, Rick Carlisle in the situation, obviously uh, Greg Popovich. I don't know if I said it or not. And you, you kind of have a better feel and understanding of when they do certain things in certain situations. And so Sometimes you rely on stuff from back in the day, and um, whether it's the way you message to your team or prepare your team or decide to have practice or not have practice or how much film to watch, there's always things. I've been fortunate, blessed, lucky, not just to be around great uh, players and people, but also uh, great coaches, and, and, and uh, I've learned a lot from them, and I still lean on the th some of the things that I've learned in the past. You know, like I know as a writer, we all kind of – take some time to find our own voice, right? Yeah, for sure. I spent the first maybe five, ten years of my career kind of copying other people's styles, you know. I read Marcus Thompson, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I read some other sure. folks in the L.A. area, Bill Plasky. And then all of a sudden you kind of find your own voice. Do you, do you, do you feel a little of that now that you're with the Kings in this yeah, spot? Yeah, 100%. You, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how a lot of these guys do it. I, you know, I, I give Dan Gilbert uh, a lot of love. He hired me at 35 years old. I'd only been an assistant, I think, for maybe six years. And he, he gave me an opportunity, took a chance on me. And I'm, I'm more than appreciative of that, and I always will be. And, you know, there's a lot of young coaches in this league, and I'm just like, man, that, that dude is good. He's way better than me because I know when I was young, you know, I had a lot going on in my head. And uh, I don't have as much going on in my head. I think my biggest worry is my grandson, you know, um, and, and, and that's probably about it. But, um, yes, you do mature in a lot of different ways as, you, uh, as you're in the business, just like any other business for sure. Hey, Mike, uh, first off, let's make it clear. I want to be like Ramona Shelburne. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. <laughs> uh, you. You know very well, like, how long the series is. This probably feels more like game 86 to some of yeah. us. How do you convey just how long 
a series is to people who haven't been through a long series or is it even possible? That's a great question. You know, you can talk to your blue in the face and you don't obviously want to talk too much because your voice gets repetitive, but our guys just have to kind of go through a lot of this, you know, uh, but we, you know, we've told them from day one, hey, it's one game at a time. It's a long series, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, they have to feel uh, us being pretty even killed. We still got to have a good time. We got to laugh and joke and all that other stuff. Um, but uh, it, 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 until you actually go through it a few times, you know, it's really hard to, Hard to tell, but our uh, give our guys credit. We, you know, during the season, we broke the season down into five game mini seasons, just trying to tell them how, um, y you know, how um, how not to look at it as a whole. Because if you look at 82 games and you keep seeing, see it, looking at, you, well, you're 13 and 15 or whatever it is. I, I mean, you're like, oh man, we played a lot of games. We got a lot of games still left to play. So we. We've preached from day one, trying not to look at the, the, the big picture or the whole thing and try to break it down into parts. And so what we've been doing is just say one game at a time. Each game is different. You've been asked about your team's three-point shooting. Like every game, the percentages haven't been great. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about, you know, you mentioned with Keegan, just let it fly. Do you just want your guys to let it fly at some point? Uh, do you have to try to change the looks? Do you, do you like the looks you've been getting? Yeah, I, I do like the looks that we've been getting. You know, you, you go and state credit. They, they're doing a great job, too. But, um, you know, and that part of the reason that you know, I told everybody, I, I've been telling everybody that, yeah, Domus has been to the first round. Yes, Kevin got past the first round one time, and uh, but not, and Trey might have been in the playoffs. But like to to have a significant role and have a huge impact and get to the second, third round of the playoffs is really hard, and it's a challenge, especially if you haven't done it a few times. You know, be, and, and there are a lot of different challenges, and and one of them is, you know, everybody says that I know a lot about. Going to state, well, they know exactly what we want to do too. They're taking us out of the stuff that got us great rhythm shots during the course of the year, and so you give them, uh, their staff, their players credit for it. And what does that mean? That means that players have to have a feel of being able to make different open shots throughout the course of the series that they're not maybe used to during the regular season. And if this is your first time doing it or first time in a significant role doing it, especially against the NBA champ, that's a different shot, especially when you got someone on your behind on the other end of the floor telling you to bust your ass playing defense, you know, to chase them, lock it up. And the intensity level, all that stuff is up. So now you're exerting more energy physically and mentally that you haven't done in the regular season. So, and, and, you know, so our guys have to understand these shots ain't going to be the same. <laughs> what that means is we got to figure it out. And part of figuring out is going through it. And we'll see if we can go through it this year and keep advancing or if it catches, you know, if it catches up to us. And this is just something that we have to get hit in the face with and then maybe get hit in the face with again and then finally figure it out. I don't know, year two, three, I don't, I don't know. But I, I'm confident that our guys can figure it out. They don't seem tight. Um, they're all great shooters. Uh, and we're encouraging them to shoot it because that's, that's our strength. And so we have to figure out those situations uh, from this point on. If, if, if not, then, you know, maybe we'll have to wait till next year. I don't know. Yeah. Mike, back here. I'm just curious, you, you, you've alluded to it a little bit, but given it's a young team going through this this type of experience for the first time, how, how do you think just collectively that they're handling um, the, uh, the the intensity of these games, the spotlight of these games, and uh, in particular, how do you think they handled it in, in game three and what's been the message in going into this one? Oh, they're doing a great job. Um, you, you know, I, I'm not uh, – there's – I mean, there's nothing that obviously there's coaching stuff like, hey, we should, we got to box Loon out, we got to gain rebound against Loon. You know, we gave up a couple of uncontested transition shots that we haven't given up. You know, and I mean, they're, again, they're NBA champions. That's 
some of those things are going to happen, but the ones that you got to try to eliminate are the second chance opportunities, you know, that they, or, or, or them winning the possession game, especially getting more free throws than us. Those are things that we have to control a little bit better so that when we do play great defense, they're not getting another crack at it and scoring 25 extra points after shooting 40 points. You think, you think you hold Golden State uh, or you think Golden State shoots 40% from the field, I think 32 percent or whatever it is from the three point line, you think you got a pretty good chance to win, you you know, no matter how how bad you shoot the ball, because you feel pretty confident in your offense. And so, yes, I can nitpick from that last game. uh, But at the end of the day, my biggest complaint in the last game was uh, Golden State's ability to offense rebound, Um, not our quote unquote inability to make shots or uh, yeah, maybe maybe turnovers actually, too. But our turnovers and the way they can converted in the points but that, that's it and you know in practices team dinners and all that guys have been fine they've handled it fine proud of them hey coach uh last game keegan got into foul trouble early i think it was three in the opening quarter um how do you kind of balance telling the guys yeah match their come out and match their physicality but also be careful and be smart uh we, we you know at at, at At this point, you can't. I mean, the game is a physical game. They're holding, uh, bumping. We're going to have to hold. We're going to have to bump. And, you know, officials are going to have to call what they see. And we're going to have to live with the results. But I I can't tell our guys to to back down, just like Steve's not going to tell his guys to back down. Because, uh, you know, it's it's a game of will out there. And whoever has the the most will will probably probably win at the end of the day. Uh, Mike, I have... Just back to Keegan for a second. I imagine yesterday there might have been a certain degree of sarcasm there when you say he cuss his ass out for passing up shots. Just yeah. can you think of an instance where that led to something kind of special in a in a following game after having a moment like that with him? Uh, I probably, I, probably every day I probably curse at Keegan a lot, you know. So 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 something special usually happens at least during the regular season. We'll see if it can change during the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, so much is being made about the experience factor now and, and even leading into the series. I, I'm curious, like when you look at Fox, how he's he's one who seems to be rising to the occasion. Like, what are you seeing from him um, on the floor, behind the scenes, in terms of leadership and, and the way he is directing this team? No, he, he, he's growing, you know. Um, I thought in game three um, he could have had a little bit more sense of urgency with his ball pressure defensively um, at the, or at the point of attack defensively. But he's, you know, and this for the, for this being his first playoffs, he's been pretty pretty darn good. He's been good. I, I like his demeanor. I like his approach. I like the stuff that he's saying to the team. It, you know, um, we just need him to continue. He, you know, he, he's going to have to be a two-way player. It, it, you know, he, he's going to have to uh, not only score for us and make plays, uh, but he's going to have to defend the opponents, one of their best perimeter players, i.e. Steph at times. And, it, you know, not obviously Steph doesn't have to do that, and some other guys don't have to do that, you, you know, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles in this situation, and, and he's more than capable of doing it, and he's handled it as, as good as uh, anybody for, for being in the playoffs, especially against the defending champs for his first time. Thank you all.